This one's for anyone new to hybrid training. Maybe you're new to running. Maybe you want to start introducing different training modalities over the week. So you want to combine running, weightlifting, strength work, maybe even a sport as well. Or maybe you're training for a high rocks or an OCR or a triathlon and you don't know how to piece it all together. This one's for you guys. So today I'm going to be giving you eight incredible tips to help you with your hybrid training. Let's get into it. So when it comes to running, you have to embrace the slow speeds. If you go too fast too often, you're gonna soon reach burnout. You're gonna overtrain, maybe pick up some niggles, especially if you're a beginner or you're doing lots of strength training in the gym. I remember I used to go out and do park runs every week and I used to go hammer. I used to hit it so hard and uh, I used to get so frustrated when I saw people going past me. After 10 weeks, I didn't really go much further. I didn't really get anywhere. I was just running too hard. So I hired a running coach and she soon taught me that the three keys benefits of running slow the first one you can build that aerobic base the second one for recovery and the third one is mental relaxation for me it's more of the battle mentally when it comes to running longer distances for sure so tip number one embrace the slowest speeds and tip number two is to run somewhere that you know and that you enjoy running Right, I live across the road from this beautiful park. I ain't got no excuses. I know that when there's a plan, I just have to cross the road and get stuck into it. So try not to get stuck around complicated routes, routes that you're not too sure about, routes that are too far from home. Keep it simple, geographically keep it close to home and plan and learn your routes. And start easy and then build on that as you get more comfortable and become better as a runner. All right, that's my interval session done today. It was a 1K warm up, a 1K cool down, and then the main session was five rounds, three minutes of running, two minutes of walk recovery, and uh, it was hard work today. Now it's time to recover. So I'm going to have four scrambled eggs cooked in five grams of Kerrygold butter, and then I'm gonna have 250 grams of brown jasmine rice. This will give me 100 grams of carbohydrates. 750 calories, 100 grams of carbohydrates, and then the remaining protein and fats. Post-workout meal, it may not look nice, I don't care. When it comes to Monday to Friday, I just eat for performance. I don't care how it looks and how it tastes. I just make sure I get my calories in and I hit my macros. I'm training a lot. I do four weight training sessions a week and I do four runs a week. Eight sessions a week. It's probably about 10 hours of training. I need about three and a half thousand calories to maintain 90 kilos of what I am. 450 grams come from carbohydrates. I get about 200 grams of protein and the rest coming from fats. It's a lot of food. For some of you at home, if you have 100 grams of carbohydrates in one sitting, you may get fatigued and tired. And that's what's called the postprandial effect. If that is you, then you need to lower the amount of carbohydrates you're having post-workout. As a rule of thumb, you want to start at about 50 grams. However, the more muscle tissue you have, if you're doing a double session like I am today, I've trained in the morning, in about five hours, I'm gonna go and do a second gym session. And if you're doing hard workouts, glycogen depleting workouts where you're working really hard or you're doing really hard runs outside, then you're gonna need more carbohydrates in your nutrition because carbohydrates are what fuel those workouts to be done and they aid your recovery. All right guys, second session about to go down. Now, this session is a strength gym session. The focus of the session is weightlifting. Now we're gonna do some overhead squats to build mobility and stability. We're gonna do some hang snatches to develop power and speed. And then at the end of the session, we're gonna do some accessory work, all right? It's gonna be dead bugs for the core, chin ups for the arms and the upper back, and then some lower body lunges with kettlebells. Fantastic session, not high volume, all about positions, and building stability, strength, and power in the gym, okay? So nothing too fatiguing that's gonna affect me for my training session tomorrow. If you guys didn't see, in the description below, there is a link to download a recovery cheat sheet. We all know we need to recover, and nutrition is good, sleep is good, but there are more things that we can do to help our recovery as hybrid athletes. The three main reasons that we need to optimize that recovery, number one, is so that we minimize fatigue and soreness and muscle damage. The second one is that we minimize injury risk, and the third one is that we can optimize our performance later that day and that next day so if you want to learn a little bit more about recovery I've made that cheat sheet go down into the description below and download that for free
right guys, so we're gonna go through nine of my top tips on how to start your hybrid training journey in no particular order, let's get into it. So tip number one is to go easy. Now, 80% of your runs need to be easy, okay? They need to be conversational. The other 20% of your work during the week can be faster, can be harder. However, as a beginner, when you're trying to build that base of cardiovascular work, things need to be easy so that you can build volume and frequency without breaking down and getting injured because those harder runs, those faster runs are harder to recover from. Now, the reason that they are meant to feel conversational, they're meant to be conversational, is because when your heart rate gets to a certain point, then your ventilatory threshold goes up with that. And that's the point where you cannot talk. So we're trying to stay below that ventilatory threshold, the point at which you can still maintain a conversation, and that's gonna keep you within that easy run pace. So tip number one, run easy. Tip number two is location. We want to use routes that are easy for us to follow. Like I said, tip one, leave your ego at home. Runs have to feel easy. If you were going on routes where there are lots of traffic, lots of roads, you're gonna be stopping and starting and things are gonna be getting in your way of maintaining this comfortable pace. The same is true if you go down some new streets and there's lots of hills, undulating hills, your heart rate's gonna be spiking too high you're not gonna feel comfortable. So tip number two, location, choose easy routes. Tip number three is recovery, in particular, post-workout recovery. Whether it's a protein shake on the go or a post-workout meal like I just had, post-workout nutrition is essential for your recovery and for your adaptations of your training. Protein, of course, that's the most important thing. However, if you are doing hard workouts, glycogen depleting workouts, and even double sessions, the pairing of protein and carbohydrates is even more effective for the replenishment of glycogen and overall recovery. Tip number four is nutrition. Running and gym, balancing them both, you're gonna be burning through a ton of energy. And the way we measure energy is through calories. So calories are the units of energy. Just like distances are measured in kilometers or miles and weight is measured in grams, kilos or pounds, energy is measured in calories. So we need to provide our body with enough calories to train and perform and also enough calories to recover from that training. So we need protein to be moderate to high and we also need carbohydrates to be moderate to high. And that's because carbohydrates are your main fuel source with this style of training. Now, if your goal is fat loss, then you need to create a calorie deficit. If your goal is to build muscle tissue, you need to create a calorie surplus. If you need to maintain your weight where it's at, you need to be at maintenance. Tip number five is to follow a plan, and that's because a plan helps you create momentum, and momentum is everything when it comes to training and results. Now, if we think about performance in terms of results over time, this is a typical performance curve. When we start our training journey, we're down here, we're early on in our time and performance is low. But over time, we increase performance and we get an explosion of momentum. The sad reality though, is that this doesn't always happen for a lot of people. What can often happen is when they start their training journey, they then get a plateau, this tapering off into poor performance, into negative performance. And typically, a hybrid athlete, this comes out as fatigue. So it's not what we want, okay? We wanna create momentum. And there's a part of this graph here that we cannot ignore, where acceleration has to occur for us to go this way. And this is what is the immovable line. Now, some of you will have passed this immovable line. Some of you may not have got to it yet, but if you have passed it, there will be another immovable line. And this immovable line is all about what have you done in your prep work, in your foundational phase before acceleration occurs into momentum. Within sports science, we call this the GPP, the general preparatory phase. How good is your GPP? What have you done? Have you built a good aerobic foundation? Have you worked on your strength, on your body composition? Have you built robustness and resilience so that you can do lots of work? Okay, because if you don't, you will then burn out into fatigue. This immovable line is all about building the foundation. What have you done in your GPP? 
And the interesting thing about health and performance is the difference between achieving momentum explosion and fatigue is often two things. The first one is consistency. Okay, we have to be consistent, following a plan. And the second one is enjoyment. We have to enjoy what we do. So momentum is the big equalizer when it comes to achieving high level performance and achieving your result. What are you doing in your foundation, in your GPP, to allow this acceleration towards momentum to occur? So follow a plan, tip number five. Tip number six is don't compare yourself to anyone else. And that's because comparison is the thief of all joy. I listened to a fantastic podcast the other day and they said something along the lines of working on your weaknesses is difficult, so make sure you embrace the journey. And I'm totally down with that, right? You've got to have goals, you've got to have your vision, tick the boxes every day, create small wins, and that's how you create momentum towards your goals. But don't compare yourself to anyone else because we are all on our own unique journey. Some people have been running longer than you. Some people have been weight training longer than us. So they're gonna be better at it naturally. So focus on yourself, have some targets, have some goals, and then chip away every single day. Tip number seven is to plan your training frequency and your training split. I believe that the best way to start is three strength training sessions a week and three runs a week. This is a good plan to work from. Now, if you have more time to train, maybe you can do double days, even better. However, more isn't always beneficial. For example, I had a client over the last four weeks, his WHOOP data has been telling him that he is overtraining and under recovering. So I've had to cut back and reduce the training volume and the intensity to allow him to recover. So we can only train and have the frequency and split that allows us to recover from it. But like I said, a good place to start is three weight training sessions a week and three runs a week. This leads us onto tip number eight, which is to break up your strength training from your running. There are lots of different training methods out there, but if you wanna train effectively and get good results, it's best to split up your workouts separately. So it could be one day you do your running, one day you do your strength training, or it could be in the morning you do your strength training and in the evening you do your running, okay? It depends on your training schedule and it depends on your goals and how well you're recovering. The worst thing you can do is your strength training session and then just tag on the conditioning at the end. This may work for some of you, but it's not effective. You're gonna be burning the candle at both ends and not getting the best adaptations from either of those training stimuluses. And lastly, tip number nine is recovery and sleep. Are you stretching, breath work, meditation, sauna, compression, ice baths? There's lots of different recovery strategies and tools that we can use to our advantage. However, the number one thing to recover is sleep. And you need at least seven, eight, nine hours every single night. Now, some of you probably do recover okay on four, five, six hours. However, it's not my opinion, you are still deemed as clinically sleep deprived when you're at six or less. If you wanna be this good hybrid athlete, make sure you're getting at least seven, eight, nine hours of sleep every single night. And that's it guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully some good quality tips there that you can take away to help with your hybrid fitness journey. Now, if you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced, I'm available to be your coach if you need some personalization and the extra care and touch. There's a form in the description below. Simply fill it out. We'll book a call and see if we're a good fit. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.